Hello and welcome to chapel. I've just been thinking about the two ways we tell time in the church. The first way is called chronos time, and it's when we, we kind of tell time in a line. What comes first, what comes second, and then what happens next. We've been telling the story of Jesus's birth using chronos time. We know about the trip to Bethlehem that his parents took, the shepherds, and the angels, and Jesus's birth. And last week, Reverend Libby talked to us about the adoration of the Magi. But today we're gonna tell time and we're gonna tell a story using a different kind of time. And it's called Kairos time. Welcome back to telling stories in Kronos time, especially in the season of Lent that's coming that leads us up to the amazing Easter day. So we'll, we'll go back and tell stories in a line, but today we're gonna to use Kairos time. And Kairos time is sometimes called cosmic time, sometimes called God's time, sometimes called the right time, the perfect time to take action. And today's story, and also next week's story, are gonna take place in Kairos time, in an amazing and perfect time to take God's action. You know, you may know a story that was told in Kairos time. There was a very famous writer whose name is Madeline Langle, and she wrote a book that you may have heard of, A Wrinkle in Time. She also went to an Episcopal church, a not Holy Nativity church, but a church very much like it, and many churches very much like Holy Nativity Church. And when she wrote her book, A Wrinkle in Time, it was only the first in a whole series of books that she called the Kairos novels. She always also wrote some called the Kronos novels, which we can talk about at another time, or you can ask me if you've seen me around campus. So you already know a little bit of what Kairos time is like. Here we are in the sanctuary of the church and we are in Kairos time, God's time, the right time, the perfect time to take action. And here we see the story that Reverend Libby told us last week. Only this time we're telling it in Kairos time. It's the story of how the Magi, after giving their gifts, went to share their epiphany with their whole world. They went out to spread the word of all they had seen and experienced. Now we're ready for the second part of this story, told in Kairos time. It happens after Jesus and his disciples traveled together. Jesus was put to death, was resurrected, and then went up to heaven giving everyone the gift of the Holy Spirit. The disciples went out, just like the Magi went out, to tell what they had seen. And these are symbolic shields of all the disciples of Jesus. They were his students, they were his followers, and they were his friends. They went out just like the Magi went out. And 
There's another part of the story too, because after the disciples went out, more and more people went out to spread the story of all they had seen and experienced. They went out to share the good news, the good news that Jesus brought us. This story in the Bible says, those who received his word were baptized and there were added that day about 3,000 souls and they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. They did many wonderful deeds and day by day, attending the temple together, breaking bread in their homes, they partook of food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to their number day by day those who are being saved. Next week, we're going to have the third part of this story told in Cairo's time. From the Magi to the disciples, to the early church. Yes, you're right, to you, you and me. I look forward to seeing you then. Thank you for listening. Alleluia.